Welcome back. This, all going well, is going to be the last episode of our mini steam power hammer build, having made 26 components. All of these things, all that's left to do is expose the ram that is hiding within this bit of steel. The ram is the important part because it is the hammer part of our steam power hammer. Ram! Ram! There are two modifications that we need to make to these drawings. Modification number one, you remember the orientation issue we had on this component? I need to make sure that the oval cross section on the piston component and the actual hammer are rotated 90 degrees from how they're specified in the image. So instead of this, where the flats line up, it needs to look like this. And second, up here at the top is a threaded hole. That exists so that we can bolt this on but remember, in the last episode, we modified the screw that goes in there to an M6 thread instead of a quarter 32 thread as specified. So they're the two modifications. And moving across to our handy drawings, I've already made a little bit of a workflow to work off of. Step number one is we're going to take this part and we are going to indicate it on center in the four jaw chuck. Yes, that's going to be just as difficult as it sounds. Indicating a rectangle into the middle. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we shall find out. Here's what I'm doing to indicate it in. I have electrical taped and masking taped four parallels on here. This is a trick that I definitely learned on YouTube, but I don't know exactly where from. Maybe I learned it from Adam Booth, this old Tony, or Joe Pye, and maybe we will never know exactly where I learned it. But I once saw somebody do this. What this does is this means instead of indicating on the outside, I have a means of indicating on the inside. So I was able to take the probe of the indicator and then as I rotate, the indicator comes up to the highest point. I can do this on opposite sides as well as on the other side of the rectangle. And what I now have is the end of this bar, concentric to or in the middle of the spindle of the lathe. What we don't necessarily know is whether this bar is straight to the spindle of the lathe. It could just be that the bar is at an angle and happens to be spinning the tip where the parallels are perfectly on line with the center, which we don't want. What we want is the bar to be rotating perfectly in line with the spindle and both ends are in line with it. So now what I've got to do is remove the electrical tape, take the parallels off, sweep back and forth across the faces to see if it's twisted. If it is, adjust it with a hammer, then put the parallels back on in order to indicate in the middle and we kind of go back and forth until we don't need to make any changes either time. So this is great. It has taken me about an hour to get this far, so we're making fabulous progress. Let's check the sides. It is super not straight. Frick! Okay, now we made it straight, the end isn't concentric anymore, so we've got to adjust that again, yay! And while I'm stressing about here at the lathe, you know what I'd love to be able to do? I'd love to be able to sit outside next to a lake, maybe do something I haven't done since I was a child, a little bit of fishing. Well, fortunately, today's sponsor is Fishing Clash. Whether you're on the go or you need a break from setting up a four drawer, you can learn about all sorts of different species of fish and see the captivating locations that they have for you to fish from right on your phone. Now, embarrassingly, whenever I did fish, I never had too much success, but here on Fishing Clash, it's been yeah. going rather well. Oh, we've got a northern pike. We've caught all sorts of stuff. Oh, look at that, rainbow trout. In all sorts of fascinating locations. That is a cool fish. I even caught fish that I didn't know existed. A Kakoro? If you're a gear freak like me, you'll love all the equipment upgrade and customization options there are in game. Within the game, you can build your own fishing village and if you've got a little competitive spirit, you're gonna have a great time because there's weekly and daily events and you can do PVP all while watching your name climb up the ranks in the worldwide leaderboards. So please click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to download the game. Make sure that you use my special code Alex Steele, isn't that convenient? To get a special $20 value reward, including a unique avatar. Thank you, Fishing Clash, for sponsoring this episode. Let's get back to it. Wow, guys, you wouldn't believe it. I just made it perfect. Frankly, I think it's the most accurate rectangle that anybody's ever made. And uh, now, oh, I hate when I do that. Now we're gonna start on step two. Kind of feels like forever since we looked at this whiteboard last. <laughs> Nothing's happened. Uh, we gotta drill a hole in the end, tap it to M6 and countersink it. In order that, we can use a live center. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm gonna turn the outside diameter to half an inch around, and it needs to be 3.844 inches long. Bang on the money. How beautiful. Next step, chap, fillet transition. No, that's not a lovely cut of steak. That's a little curve here. What is that tool? Oh, well, it's got a big radius on it. I think I'd quite like to use that to make my big radius. Never used this one before. This one came with the lathe. Just give it a little sharpen up. And we'll see how she works. Hopefully she cuts all right. Alrighty, what do we think? Oh, it's beautiful! Oh my goodness! Oh yeah! And now, dear friends, it needs to go to the milling machine for us to install, or rather expose, the flats. In the vise, mill the flats. So I've got the most important part of this done. The flats have been milled. The end here will fit on that component of the piston, but all of that is only worthwhile if it fits into our mouthpiece. And it doesn't quite fit. Oh, I was really hoping that off the machine it would work perfectly, but it doesn't fit. So we're gonna have to do some fettling with the needle files. <laughs> That's a ram, folks. Woo! Right, so the ram is done. Now, I deviated a little bit from the drawing because the drawing specs out necking down this kind of die area even more, but then you end up with a really small die and a big discrepancy between top and bottom die, and I preferred the aesthetics of this. And I preferred the idea of these things being a little bit closer to the same size. In an ideal world, I would have spotted that earlier, and I would have made them actually match. Anyway, there is one thing that I know I've missed, and potentially a number of other things that we're soon gonna find out we did miss. The thing that I know I missed that I need to do before we start assembling this is to bring the distance between the faces on these bosses to the right size. I missed that measurement call out when I first looked at the drawings and I'm also then going to sandblast the whole thing so it looks nice. So five minutes at our lovely neighbor Matt's workshop has produced this lovely oak block, which is so much better than anything I could have made. Now time for a little bit of Danish oil. Thank you very much, Matt, for giving me your beautiful wood. <laughs> well, I thought I was at the assembly stage, but I just realized in the last episode, I asked people for advice on what to do with this O-ring assembly that just doesn't fit in here without probably a lot of force. That video hasn't yet published yet for us, so I haven't seen the comments on what to do. It's just definitely not Fitting. What do I do? All right, let's have a little look, see about what we can do about this. Maybe try to take the O-ring out and machine it down a little bit more in there. Are we getting a bike tire off? Yeah, isn't it just? A little tiny, tiny baby bike tire. I've got the measurement perfect on it. The width is good as well. I can maybe just shave off, shave off a little bit. All right, definitely looks a little bit more proportional now, but let's see. Put some really thin oil on this time. Ah, look at the mark I left. That ain't going. More needs to come off, I say. Oh, oh. The trouble is these drawings don't have any sort of tolerances. So it says make this an inch diameter. Despite the fact I'm not actually a machinist, 
I know that you don't just make one thing an inch, the bore, and the other thing an inch, the piston. Like, there's got to be some sort of tolerance because there is no such thing as a perfect inch. Having some sort of a tolerance measurement would also tell us about the type of fit that's required here. Maybe it does need to be super tight. I don't know. It's definitely an airtight fit, though, that's for sure. I'm gonna try and make the groove wider. Ow. Still a bit stiff, but it's improving. I can at least now push it with my fingers without my fingers feeling like they're gonna fall off. I'm gonna leave it like that, because if I go too loose, then the air is definitely gonna be leaking. So now, until we are further interrupted, we actually put it together. <clears throat> We need to install gland packing. Check this out, graphite infused cord, I believe. I'm sure there's a technique to it that I'm about to butcher. Woo! Pretty good, I think that's gonna work. This was not meant to be screws, it was meant to be studs and nuts. So we take them off. What? There's a grub screw that supposedly needs to be tightened, but how would you do it? As you remember, this piece has a grub screw on the back. That is to lock it into this hole, but once it's in here, that is facing this way, to the back. How do we tighten that grub screw? Is there a hole that I didn't drill? Oh, can't see any hole from this projection, but look at that hole, 3 8 diameter. So I think we need a 3 8 hole on the back here. I missed two more holes. Oh, great. I made it through this whole project without snapping a drill bit. The last hole I have to drill, I snap. That's more like it. Although I can sense some impending problems. Like right, we got the orientation correct here, right? But have a look at this. You see how we're impeded, not by this handle, but by this rectangular hole. The one I just had to widen a minute ago to get this thing in in the first place. It looks like it's too short, because here are where our little stopper bits are gonna go in these two threaded holes, and it does not look like it goes down as far enough. And there is nothing specifying the dimension of that hole in the drawing. And so again, I think this needs modifying. <laughs> Right, we got her sorted, goes down low enough now. Now the fork end gets screwed to the piston valve. Through this video, we've had some great comments in the comment section, and a topic of discussion has been, who on earth is this kit even for? because you need an entire machine shop to do it. I wonder how many people have bought this kit and then <laughs> unboxed it and then just not done anything with it. I've actually done something similar. I wanted to make a die filer uh, and I bought castings for a die filer. I believe Blondie Hacks on YouTube has actually made that exact die filer. Uh, and the castings arrived and I thought to myself, wow, I'm not good enough at machining to do that. Probably at least 50% of all of the Stuart model's castings are just sitting in boxes doing nothing. Because you need ridiculous amounts of tools. The other fabulous observation that you've all been making in the comments is that I've been spending a lot of money on tools to make this. Should we try and have a little ballpark guess as to how much this project has cost us? The casting kit itself, 400 pounds minus the vats, about 500 quid, it's like 600 bucks. And I believe I have spent at least a thousand pounds on mostly necessary tooling and equipment in addition to what I already had here. So this has been a very expensive project and who is it for? Well, there is an entire- <laughs> Someone very small. <laughs> very small blacksmith. It's for somebody with a machine shop, too much time on their hands and a little bit of cash to burn who wants an interesting, mentally stimulating project. That's who it's for. Achoo! Wow, look how great that lines up. Are you kidding me? It looks like ass. How? Put the anvil in the other way around. It's gonna be the exact same because I made the anvil really accurately and central. We get to make it look hopefully less arsey. If I do that, make the die off center to the anvil. Oh, misery. I mean, it's okay. 
but it should be a lot better. Now, we plummet. <laughs> the worst setup anybody's ever seen. Don't have a regulator on it. Who knows what's gonna happen now, folks? There's a lot of leakage. <sighs> It's stuck. That's great. This was meant to be a really dramatic ending, but I can't get the ram to lift up. Oh no! Oh! Oh yes! It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. I found the problem, baby. Okay, so I just took out this stud that restricts the movement of the arm and stops it coming up high enough because the downstroke happens when we pull the lever down and the upstroke required that to go just a little bit higher. I should have ran the machine and then used the actual lever arm positions to drill and tap those holes from. Because now if I want to put functioning studs in, we're going to end up with extra holes. And I think that's probably going to be what we have to do because it's going to make life easier to know exactly where I have to be to get this to run right. <laughs> yes! I think this is one of the coolest toys I've ever owned. Now time for the most important question. Will it forge? Turning up the pressure. Three, two, one. Yes! It's a real power hammer. It is so adorable and it works. Yes! <laughs> That is just absolutely nuts. <laughs> we made a little baby Steve Hammer. I am chuffed to bits. It actually works. And I only almost lost my mind about 100 times. I've learned so much about machining on this. Thank you for all your help in the comments along this journey. And most of all, thank you for following along. I really recognize that it's a big privilege to be able to devote as much time as I have to this project. And that wouldn't be possible without you being here. So thank you, and of course, thank you to today's sponsor, which was Fishing Clash. Check them out at the link down below. It's now time to jump into the next project, and I look forward to seeing you then.